week of Easter 6, Sunday, what does this and that mean? And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Leviticus 19, verses 1 and 2. Dear Redeemed, In the Old Testament, the Lord God desired His people to be in His presence and to share His holiness with them according to His divine service to them. To them, He said, You are holy, you shall be holy, you will be holy. In the New Testament, Jesus declares a similar truth in His Sermon on the Mount, the last verse of chapter 5. Theologians have struggled with this text, trying to determine whether it is law or gospel, whether it is a demand or a gift. To make a long grammar lesson short, the Greek verb form can be either a command to do something or a statement of a promised gift. If it is law, then the translation is, You therefore must be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. While if it is gospel, it is the free promise, therefore you will be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5.48 What does this and that mean? Well, let's begin with what we know that it doesn't mean in either case. This verse does not refer to the perfection that you presently have by the grace of God through faith in Christ Jesus. That perfection is declared to be yours now, and it's not because of your good works or deeds. Your perfection is a present, declared reality by the grace of God through the working of the Holy Spirit and the word of the gospel. So what does this mean if the verse is law? You, therefore, must be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect? Peter and Paul exhort us to this in their epistles when they encourage the faithful to live lives of holiness and godliness. As a fruit of faith, you are called to continue in the doctrine and practice of the Christian faith, aiming at righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, steadfastness, and gentleness. 1 Timothy 6.11 This aspect of discipleship is a perfection that is not complete and fulfilled in this life. Rather, it is only when we depart this life in faith and enter heaven that we are perfect and complete, hearing the words of the risen, ascended, and reigning Jesus, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Matthew twenty-five twenty-three. Until then, we long for, seek, and strive to abide by Jesus' word as we train ourselves in godliness by remaining steadfast in the doctrine of Christ and put his teachings into practice. In other words, remaining in faith toward the Lord and in fervent love for one another. It is most certainly true that godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. 1 Timothy 4.8 And what does this mean if this verse is gospel? Therefore you will be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. The Greek word for perfect has the meaning of being complete. That the Christian, who is presently perfect in Christ as declared by God, will be completely perfect, is God's promise to his Christians that the old sinful nature that constantly hangs upon the soul will be no more. So also will sin, death, corruption, lust, and a legion of other outbreaks of original sin be gone. The words of Jesus as recorded in Matthew 5.48 are best echoed in one of St. Paul's epistles. The apostle writes to Christians concerning the gospel that sustains the faithful, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 verse 6. Or, as the brother of our Lord asks concerning Abraham, Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works faith was made perfect, complete? James 2.22 Prayer Lord God, dear Father in heaven, according to the word and the working of the Holy Spirit, and by your grace through faith in Christ, I am justified and declared perfect. All praise and glory to you. 
Now, according to your word, I am to remain faithful in the doctrine of Christ, and to be perfect as you are perfect and complete. For both those scant times when I am able to approach your will, and for the continuous pardon and forgiveness for failing to abide by your will, all praise and glory to you. As I continue to live the days allotted to me by you, I ponder the gracious truth that you will, one day, send your holy angels to descend and take me unto you, that where Christ is, there I shall be. On that day, and in that eternal moment, I will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. I will be complete and perfect, as you have promised. All praise and glory to you. Amen. Hymn number 314, stanzas 8 and 10. He's just for God and He alone, who by this faith is living. This faith will by good works be known to God the glory giving. Faith gives thee peace with God above, but thou thy neighbor too wilt love, if thou art a new creation. From faith in Christ, whene'er tis right, good works are surely flowing. The faith is dead that shuns the light, no good works ever showing. By faith alone the just shall live, good works alone the proof can give, of love which true faith worketh. <laughs>